on 8 out of 10 cats. Country gent, Vic Reed. The sky's the limit, Damon Hall. And their captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, the one and only, Joan Rivers. Dancing on ice, it's Holly Willoughby. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr! Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, last year British women spent £280 million removing unwanted body hair? Surely it'd be cheaper and easier just to move to Germany. <laughs> women blink almost twice as much as men. Brilliant! Think of the stuff we can get away with. Uh -huh. <laughs> and 54% of taxi drivers think we shouldn't join the Euro. We didn't conduct a survey, they just told us that. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave's team. What have the nation been talking about? It's the World Cup, we think. Yeah, yes. I think the final probably largely be remembered for the antics of the uh, French captain, Zinedine mm -hmm. Zidane, who uh, was going to quit at the end of the game anyway, but decided to take early retirement. Yeah. He nutted this guy in the chest. And the clip they always show is when he walks off desolate, taking some bandage off, he walks past the World Cup, doesn't he? Which is like, they're on a plinth. Right. And I thought it would be really, really funny if he did. He walked off like that and went, I'm having that and all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, who's going to get it back off him? You go and get it. I'm not getting it off him. <laughs> <laughs> and they reckon that he said that his... Uh, that the guy at Matarazzi said that his accused his mother, said that his mother was a terrorist whore. Oh, so what? Any woman over 50 goes, thank you for thinking that. <laughs> if he had said your mother's an old, ugly pig in a big burka, you'd go, how fucking dare you? But <laughs> your mother's an old whore, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you think be being called a whore is a compliment? If you don't have a tampon on your purse, you're glad someone thinks of you sexually. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> what is a terrorist whore? How does that a work? A terrorist whore is a woman who's sexy but heavy around the middle because she's wearing a bomb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing, the important point to make about the World Cup, the reason, one of the reasons that the Italians won there was that they were a very fresh team. They had lots of energy compared to other teams. And that's because Italian football, is the, well, we all know it's fixed. So, technically, they haven't played a competitive match all season, those players. <laughs> <laughs> the whole season they've been playing games where they just kick off, knock it back for a bit. Time for the penalty? Yeah, go on, over you go. <laughs> Are you a football fan? Do you understand soccer? I don't understand. I'm not... I'm Jewish. We don't play sports, we sell you the equipment. I mean, it's <laughs> just... The saddest thing I saw the whole World Cup was, uh, after England went out, I went into a, a supermarket, and on special offer, they had half-price England World Cup celebration cakes. Who, in their right mind, if England won the World Cup, would go, hooray! <laughs> oh, no! No, oh, no, there's this cake spraying everywhere. Everyone's going, oh, no! Come oh, on, no. I'm going to cake it! <laughs> Shall we have a look and see whether the World Cup and Zinedine Zidane is one of the most talked about things this week? Yes, of course it is, the number one talking point. Yes, Zinedine Zidane headbutted an Italian player who accused his mother of being a terrorist whore. Zidane was brought up single-handedly by his mother, who had to work two jobs. She was a terrorist and a whore. <laughs> Obviously, we don't mean that. Sean, Eamon and Vic, what else have the nation been talking about this week? David Cameron's got another attention-grabbing yeah. headline scheme idea where we should uh, apparently understand teenage hood-wearing characters. He wants to cuddle them in the park, doesn't he? I think he thinks things through. Because teenagers, the last thing they want is cuddles, isn't it? Wait, what's, what's he got planned for goths? <laughs> they don't want cuddles. For goths. When I see a goth, Cold. I don't see a goth. I don't see an individual goth. I see two disappointed parents. <laughs> <laughs> they're thinking, and they're thinking, they're thinking he used to be such a lovely boy, now he looks like a slutty girl. <laughs> Are people wearing hoodies a problem in the States? I, I don't know. At my age, when I see someone coming at me with a hood, I run because I figure it's the Grim Reaper. So <laughs> I just... Did he say he, he formed his opinions after watching that film, Kidultot? Yeah, he did, yeah. 
So is, it, is Criminal Justice Act going to be based on, what, Police Academy 6? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Holly, any thoughts on hoodies? Do you like them? I don't think I want to hug one. They might nick my wallet while I'm giving them a cuddle. I'll be honest, I think if they get a hug from you, they will have other things on their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Even more easy than do. I don't think they'll be thinking about that. I think the blood might be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> He just comes out with stupid statements all the time. Nobody would be surprised if he said something like, I've got an idea, elastic houses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's small if there's only two of you, but then if you've got some people around, you just stretch it out. <laughs> there we go, elastic houses. And everyone goes, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Moon harnesses. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? It just could work. Throw a harness over the moon. Two handles, pull it near. <laughs> it comes nearer and nearer and nearer. We get more gravity and begin to float. <laughs> it makes sense. You're a one-man think tank. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look and see whether Cameron's campaign for hoodies is one of the top five most talked about things. <laughs> the Sun has launched a campaign to hug a hoodie, or, in other words, restrain them until the police arrive. <laughs> OK, uh, Dave, Joan and Holly, what else have the nation been talking about? Artificial sperm. Artificial sperm. Men won't be needed anymore. Yes, they will, until a Petri dish can buy you a diamond bracelet. <laughs> they will still be needed. You romantic sperm. you. <laughs> no, but it upset me terribly, because I belong to Overeaters Anonymous, and sperm is 450 calories a swallow. So if they're going to find this new sperm, make it no cow sperm. Right, sperm light. Sperm light. Sperm light. It makes such sense. Think about it. You know, you, you, you're, you're dieting all day, and then you're going, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Think very carefully before they, before they make men redundant because there are consequences. Who's going to bring the bins out? It's very true. The summer's going to be ruined. Who's going to do the barbecue? I think some little things are missed, like who's going to put all the ships in the bottles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon in six months they'll all be living in caves. They'll be tidy though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, it is. Yes, this week fertility scientists have produced mice using artificial sperm. There were worries in the tabloid press that the artificial creation of sperm will make men redundant. Fortunately, the sperm are kept in jam jars, so you'll need a man to get the lid off. 